if I read one more beginning magic book that talks about magic and spellcraft as if it's quantum mechanics, I will scream. Hey there, saplings. My name is Danny, and welcome to Esoteric Moment. Today, we are outside in the ridiculous heat of the east pasture on our farm so that I can rant and scream at you about magic and spellcraft. I'm hoping that the yelling geese in the background won't be too loud, but we'll see how this goes. So if you're like me, you've read a ton of books geared to pagans of all sorts. Not just druids, but the neo-pagans or any book about magic. Many of these like beginner books talk about magic as if it is like quantum mechanics. And I have so many issues with this. I understand why many pagans feel the need to kind of like justify magic and its importance in our lives and its impact on our lives by using science. In our world today, it's really easy to say this is fact, this exists because of science. We understand our universe in a host of different ways that we didn't in the ancient world. That is amazing. But as someone who took physics as their undergrad major, I can't tell you how wrong this concept is. So let's talk about quantum mechanics first, generally. Quantum mechanics is a field of physics and it describes a lot of different phenomena and we're going to talk about things pretty generally, mainly because that's all that's necessary to dispute the fact that magic is just like quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is about scale and it's really about the subatomic and small scale of our universe. It's not talking about pendulums or levers, that's all about classic physics. And even a lot of the science that we use to describe phenomena in space, space-time in general, that's still a lot of classical physics at work. It's easy to think that because magic works on really like limited scopes or because it's really subtle, that it would describe the same scale as quantum mechanics, i.e. small, subatomic. And of course the subatomic affects our macro level as well, but the physics that's talking about quantum mechanics is like really small, really, really, really small. And the magic we're doing is subtle, not small. We're making huge impact on our life. We're talking new jobs, abundance in our life, um, romance. We're talking about garden magic. We're talking about house and like home blessings, cleansings, all of these things are macro in scale. Something I also read a lot is how Schrodinger's cat is a lot like magic. Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment from the 1930s. If you want more details, definitely check out my blog. There'll be a link in the description or Wikipedia. Surprisingly great at describing physics in the general terms. Anyway, Schrodinger's cat, a thought experiment that is often kind of misconstrued in our day-to-day -day conversations, but generally we had quantum mechanics being new, very trendy, and Schrodinger's cat was a thought experiment to prove how absurd the general and like accepted way of understanding quantum mechanics was at the time. They were talking about particularly superposition. It's really talking about the result of being linked to a random subatomic event that may or may not happen. The Copenhagen interpretation at the time was that something was both alive and dead at the same time until observation. And at the point of observation is when things shifted or, you know, chose one state or the other. Erwin Schrodinger was like, mm, that's absurd. So he designed a thought experiment with a cat in a box being linked to being alive or dead based on the state of a subatomic particle. Obviously, you can't have a cat both alive and dead. That's absurd. The point is your magic is not an example of quantum superposition. Magic is not both happening and not happening at the same time. Your will is what is deciding magic to happen. You might be changing something, making something happen in your life, but it's not in the subatomic state of being alive or dead. It is you making change, making shit happen. The other point I wanna make is quantum mechanics isn't really about absolute values. You know, a lot of quantum mechanics is about probability and uncertainty and evaluating probability in a certain area due to a certain particle. Take an atom, for example. 
the electrons are not in a particular position at a particular time, we have like a probability cloud of where those electrons will be. Do you really want to describe your magic in terms of probability? Are you 35% sure that you're going to make that money spell work for you? Uh, no. At least when I do magic, I don't. When I do magic, I am talking about real change that I am making happen. My will brings power to my abundance spell. I am doing the work outside of my magic to bring in the money that I need. Sure, there are times where spells don't work, but it's not really about probabilities. It's about our understanding the environment in which the spell was made and you know, the implications of the words and symbols and actions that we use to make that magic happen. If you want to use physics to describe magic, please stick to classical mechanics. You know, when we're talking about exchanging energy and moving our will to create the situation that we want, you'll find a lot more synergy in the math that is involved in pendulums and levers and moving energy on the macro scale. Let's stop selling magic short. Don't forget that the why behind our spells is our very own will, belief, and power. Our ability to connect to the energy around us, that is what makes magic happen. And we don't necessarily need to justify magic working with science. Understanding the universe, studying science so we feel more at home and forever are expanding the lens of our universe, that is a great thing. Please don't stop studying science. Just stop using it to describe a phenomena that isn't appropriate. Science and magic are both languages and they work well in the realm of their experience. But mixing them, there are some translation errors and we don't have them figured out yet. And when writers who really don't know anything about science try to use it to describe something that I love, magic, it just doesn't work well. And it makes the writer sound idiotic. And it makes it harder to defend magic as a real tool and solution for the things that are happening in our world. And I want it to be a real solution. Finally, if you are someone who has decided, you know what, this science theory totally works for what I'm trying to describe on the metaphysical level, fine, use it. But I wanna see some damn math. All right, in the comments below, let me know, do you agree? Have you read about quantum mechanics and magic and books before? How do you feel about science and magic mixing? Uh, yeah, I'm curious if anyone else gets as frustrated as I do. Maybe it's just because I was a physics undergrad major, but like, ooh, so frustrating. Today's sapling shout out goes out to Katie Flowers. I'm sure you are all subscribed to her fabulous YouTube channel, uh, but she has been a just wonderful dear friend and I really love her videos. But when I decided to do this series, I mentioned how I wanted to rant about quantum mechanics and physics and she really said that she was curious about my thoughts on that topic. So thanks for giving me the boost and courage needed to actually hit publish on this rant video. If you want to be the next sapling shout out, please don't forget to comment below and let me know your thoughts. That's how I know to choose you. Thanks for watching and as always, may you find peace in the sacred grove.